Hey, welcome to Clicks and Quesadillas. I'm Jason, your host. This is my guest, Morgan. Hi. Morgan, thanks for coming over and letting me interview you. Happy to. Um, <clears throat> uh, the last person I interviewed uh, was Josh. Uh, you're related to him, are you not? Mm, yeah, I think so. I think we're related. Uh, cool. I should be pretty confident about that. Yes, yes, he is my brother. How daring. <laughs> um, what do you remember about Hero Clicks? Because it's been a long time. It's been a very long time. I don't remember a lot. I remember what the movement in the game looks like. I remember what other people playing the game looks like, but I don't remember how to play myself. It's good, it's good. I think we played like, did we play it once? I think so, and I watched you and Josh play a couple of times. So I've, I've seen you playing with other like Mosaic students, kids, and yeah. But I haven't played much. Good deal. I, I miss Josh making jokes about Iron Man being Stop Man because all the Iron yes. Man had like hands out. Yes. He's like, oh look, that's a stop double man. Stop Man. And <laughs> I miss that. <clears throat> uh. Uh, with what you remember, do you remember anything, like, especially exciting about the game? Hmm. I think the way you can combine teams is cool, and how the stats are affected by the other pieces you have on the board, or the mat, I'm not sure what you, what the terminology for that is. Yeah, yeah, that's um, good. That's good. The figures are really cool. I like how big the universe is for characters, and that they're always bringing in more characters. Oh yeah, Marvel, DC... Uh, they have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now. Do yeah, they? This, this okay. last year, uh, yeah, it's, it's something I'm really still excited about that That's they really cool. they brought turtles into the Hero Clicks universe. Nice. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's it's awesome. Uh, do you remember anything about the game that was uh, particularly not fun? I don't know. I don't. I think the game as a whole is fun. I'm not good at strategy games. They're not what I find fun. Um, so for me, trying to remember all the rules, um, coming out as a beginner, not being a strategy person was difficult. But I think mm. with enough time, the rules do make sense as long as you've practiced enough to remember them. Dungeons and Dragons was the same way at first, so. It, it is, uh, with Heroclix, definitely a lot to, to take in at first, with uh, each of the four slots can have, uh, I don't know how many colors there are, there must be like, like eight colors, so eight times four is 32, okay. so there's 32 different powers wow. to memorize or keep having to look at your little, like a little handbook, That's the cool. powers and abilities card. The pack is what Heroclix people would call their nice. little reference thing. Okay, <clears throat> that makes sense. Uh, do you have a favorite superhero? Captain America is my favorite superhero. Yes, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, tell me more. Okay. I like Captain America mostly from... I mostly am a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan. I haven't gotten to read a lot of comics, browse the Marvel wiki periodically, but I like that he's a very moral character. Mm -hmm. He fights for good things. Um, and really, that's that's the biggest thing. It's just a good integrity and compassion, which I think is important in a character. So Wonder very Woman awesome. would be my other new favorite for the same reasons. Good deal. Now, I used to read comics back in like middle and high school, but like I was never a Captain America fan mm -hmm. until, like, the movies came out. And I was like, what? Then it became a little more real to me. It's funny how it I always felt like comic book, that. Uh, corny Captain America. But right. movie, what? Right. That yeah. guy's awesome. Yes, we had a character fighting Nazis before America was fighting Nazis. <clears throat> and all of the cheese that comes with the time period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I really... Loved uh, the first two Captain America movies. Those are my my favorite of the the cinematic universes so far. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I I miss Red Skull and I hope he comes back yeah, somehow because really they didn't like cool definitively villain. kill him. I mean, him. if you fall off something 
in a Marvel movie, you're not dead until, I mean, really ever, because yeah. they can still resurrect you. And right, but but he didn't fall off either. He got like sucked into like. Oh, that's something. right. That's right. Oh. Like because of the the cube. Yes. Yeah. So very ambiguous. Yeah. Can right. Bring everybody right. Back. Or not. We'll see. I, I hope so. I thought, uh, I don't know, Mr. Smith, whatever his name is, did a really good job. Yes. Elrond. Yes. Um, Hugo Weaving. Oh, good job. I'm not good with actors' names. <laughs> Do you, Would you have a favorite villain? A favorite villain? Will asked me this one time, Ooh, and I was like, question. I don't know. I mean, when you think of comic villains, the Joker's the first one that pops into your head, usually, but he's not, I don't know if I would have a favorite villain. Mm -hmm, not, mm -hmm. I'm not much of a villain person. I think Loki has been a really fun character to watch. Cinematic but movies? Yeah. Universe, yeah. But I don't know if I would put him in the solid villain category. Definitely villainous, but not the same threat level as something um, like Red Skull, or who had those moments where like, oh, I think he's fine right now, and then he's like, nope, tricked you. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, trickster thing, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I kind of wish Loki would take more of, like, the good side, because I, I, I want to like the character. Yeah. And, yeah. Have you seen uh, the new Thor movie? Right I have, now? yes. Oh, I have not. But oh. you can tell me about it. So it is very much like Guardians of the Galaxy. It's okay. a very comedic movie. Um, I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun, but it's very different than Dark World. A um, lot of color. Good, it's a really, good. really, really colorful movie. Commercials made it look really good. Uh, yeah, the first two Thor movies were uh, a little boring. Well, I mean, I was okay watching them at first, but I mean, to think like, oh, hey, I'll just put in Thor or uh, Dark yes, World. No, nah, I don't want to watch it again. I just. Yeah, I don't regret watching them, but they're not ones that I. No, oh, I'd really like to go just watch Dark World today. Hmm. I should probably give it another go. It's been a couple years. Um, let's see. Uh, tell me about your other hobbies while I turn off this phone that's making noise. Okay. Any specific other hobbies? Um, I like, uh, along the, the nerdy side, I guess. Okay, nerdy I mean, hobbies. Like, like okay. you, I mean, All tell right. me about your, 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 uh, experience with D&D. &D. Yeah, so I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for two and a half years now, I think. Um, we've been in the same campaign for two years. We haven't finished it yet because of schedules. What um, is this campaign? This campaign is one that my brother is DMing, and we are in a zombie, a medieval or your typical fantasy universe, but it's a zombie apocalypse. Mm. And we're kind of the group that was chosen at a random to defeat the, what we found out to be a, an old evil spirit that has been resurrecting the dead and causing them to cause all kinds of problems. And we don't know why yet, uh, but we just got all these celestial, Celestial gold weapons to go take it down, and we Neat. ended up <laughs> celestial gold weapons. Yeah, and we had an, a ghost captain sail us to the island where the evil being is residing, and the whole shore is covered in zombies that part for us uh -huh. as we walk through. And that's kind of where we ended the last session. And I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. So I did find my own grave. That was my reward for rolling a couple of natural twenties in a row. Um, I'm not really sure how that was a reward yet. You found your own grave? Yeah, uh, we had finished this really intense fight, rolled a couple of 20s, um, so shot things really well. I'm a ranger, so I've hit a point where I can, that's really all I get to do that's special, but I can shoot things really well. And I ended up rolling another 20, I think, to open a door to go into the other room, and it's a grassy room when we had just been in a volcano. So we opened it up, and it's obviously a very magical place and there's a fresh grave and I felt compelled to dig apparently <laughs> and um I was you feel compelled to dig like, oh do I is that what Josh yeah. told you yeah your character feels compelled like, to dig but like, the know, grave I feel oh. like at this point yeah that makes sense for the character you know you're clearly in a magical place and now there's grass and something's trying to tell you something so you're mm. gonna go dig so your character didn't know it was a grave at first I was it looked gravish I mean there's a there's a mound of dirt I mean, it looked, okay. everything looked like a grave in this room. Right. And I went and I dug and I found my skeleton and my bow 
and my dog's skeleton, and then in the mouth, or in his mouth was a bag, and I opened the bag and it was a couple of healing potions, which I guess are a good thing, but I feel like the, being cool. offset by finding your own skeleton is not much of a reward. I feel like that was more of a punishment that he thought, I, I don't know. But it was kind of cool, and mm. that's actually the specific point where we stopped our session. Mm. So I don't know what's in the next room. Hopefully not more skeletons, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. fake skeletons. I don't know what, I really don't know what that was, but it was unsettling. So are the zombies like, uh, bite you, you turn into a zombie kind yeah. of zombies? Okay. Yeah. I don't, we've not hit the point where anybody in our party has turned into a zombie. And I don't actually remember if you do turn into a zombie but you definitely die. You have, um, you take a lot of damage and you take progressively more damage, then you become unconscious and then you die. And then I guess if you let it go on long enough, you would, uh, turn. <clears throat> but we get scrolls periodically from benevolent spirits. Mm. And those are the only things that can reverse the only like healing. For yeah. The, but your zombie window curse. time is very narrow. So you have to make sure you don't get bitten and you have to, Make sure you know who has scrolls in your party and who can share scrolls in your party. Um, because if somebody ends up courting them all, then everybody else dies. Mm -hmm. so Josh's fiance usually ended up having a lot of them in her inventory because um, she didn't like to use them on herself. So sometimes when she would fall unconscious, we would have to go through her bag and use them on her because she was saving them for later or she her character didn't think it was a good idea to use them at the time. So... Oh. Yeah, we just kept a count of how many are around and how many times we could risk getting bitten by things. Hmm. But Interesting. Yeah. It's a fun mechanic. It's probably good to be frugal with something that you don't right. know. But you'll still definitely die yeah. Yeah, in an also hour true. if you don't use it. So, <laughs> <laughs> But we've gotten them in really weird ways. So sometimes we have to do something. Sometimes they're just given to us. Um... <clears throat> Uh, your first experience with D and D, yes, it was with your brother, or yes. had you had any? I think the any... three of us were playing. Oh, okay, right. That was the first trial session, but yeah, I hadn't played in. I I helped Josh get into D and D. He had yeah. questions and was trying to figure things out about D and D, so he came to me, and uh, I had some sense. experience with it. Yeah, although not a lot, but and you know, to help I've... us figure out the mechanics, yeah. <clears throat> um, which is really helpful. Um, so yeah, he's the only person I've had DM. I haven't played with other people DMing much at all. Um, Logan Chase has DM'd a session or two that I've um, jumped in on. He's done a couple of one-off sessions instead of full campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I'm not super experienced with D&D, &D, but it's really fun. We actually played in a Chinese airport this year. Um, we brought our D&D &D stuff on a mission trip with us <laughs> so we could flex. We knew we had a nine hour layover in China. Nine hour so, layover, huh? Yeah. All um, right. Yeah, so we, we played it on the floor of a Chinese airport and we really, I was very impressed by everybody. They didn't look horrified or super confused. They were very polite about it because it was weird. It was definitely weird. But you know, after everybody's been flying internationally, you stop caring about what people are doing with dice. Right, right. I, I one time I try, I brought my hero clicks with me and I tried to get my child, my eight-year-old, to play Hero Clicks with me in the airport, just because I want to do it in like some odd places if I have the opportunity. It's kind of fun to. But he didn't want to play, so yeah. <clears throat> well, at the airport, I mean, we've played at home I mean, before, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you played in any other odd places or just the? the I've mean, been all over downtown Winter Garden, playing in different areas um mostly like the pavilion back there uh but usually we play at home in our back we have a big screened in room in the backyard so that's where we usually end up playing but sometimes in the house but no, i think definitely the airport was the strangest one good deal um i think i've played hero clicks uh I played it, I think, at the mall, at the food court tables. I think I played oh, with nice. Derek there. That's fun. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I also played, my wife played me on one of my birthdays at a, uh, a picnic table at a park. That's fun.
fun. It was. It was nice. It was a nice day. It was good. It's a good birthday. <clears throat> uh, she beat me. Yeah. I wow. gave her some really good pieces. <laughs> that was gracious. Thank you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Uh, so, uh, tell me about Rebel Legion. Okay, so that's something that I've been wanting to get into for a long time. It is a, um, that and 501st, and then there's the Mandalorian Mercs and the R2 Builders Club, but they're, um, international clubs, so there's bases all over the world, uh... Oh, international. Mm. Yeah, so there's, I mean, Japan's got a base, Germany's got a big base, any, I mean, they're adding bases constantly. You have to have a certain number of people who are involved, and then you can start one anywhere. So if your country doesn't have one, you can get one started. Um, and then in America, we're by state um, because we're a really large country. But and it's yeah, yeah. a costuming club. It's a volunteer costuming club. So we are Star Wars costumers and cosplayers. Um, and we are not run by Lucasfilm. We're not allowed to accept any money. We're not officially endorsed by Lucasfilm, but we are, we have been given permission by them to operate. So we get to um, do a lot of really cool things through that. We have to have our costumes up to screen accuracy, and then we have to submit, for Rebel Legion, we submit to a panel of judges online. So we submit our pictures front, back, side, side, and an action shot. And 501st, I believe, judges on a more local base with judges in person. Um, so there's some slight differences there. And once you are approved, usually it takes a couple of times. There's usually something you have to tweak on your costume. I had to re-dye things a lot. Um, you get to sign up on forums and go on what we call troops. And a troop is any call out we've gotten to do an event. So this past weekend we had, um, I was in two troops and we did a robotics competition at East Ridge Middle School and they just wanted some Star Wars characters walking around, so 501st and Rebel Legion, we headed out there and just walked around and took pictures hmm. with anybody who wanted pictures for a while. And then the Claremont food truck battle also wanted us to come out, so after that, we hopped on over there and we walked up and down the rows of food trucks and took pictures there for a while. Um, so sometimes it's stuff like that. Sometimes, um, like when a movie comes out with The Last Jedi recently, we were at a lot of different movie theaters. Oh, I bet. Um, <clears throat> just hung out in the lobby and again taking pictures that's really what we do is we just like making people smile um that's why we do it because we spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on these costumes to get them approved so we can go do these things to make people happy uh, which is really fun um and sometimes we get calls for um more unusual and really cool things to uh, like sporting events are really neat but then our favorite the most special thing that we get to do is um, when we get to do these very short notice visits. We had a family a couple of weeks ago whose boy was, um, he had terminal cancer and he wanted to meet a couple of specific characters before he passed because he couldn't go see The Last Jedi. He was homebound, he couldn't leave, but he wanted some Star Wars to come to him. So we had members from all over the state come to his house and spend a couple of hours with him. Oh, that's neat. So we get to do some really cool stuff like that. It's, um... He was excited, huh? Change. Yeah. And I think it was, it's nice as a family, too, if you've been going through something that hard together to all take a couple of hours to play. It doesn't make things not hard, but getting to just kind of goof off and take pictures of some Star Wars characters and, um... It can lighten things up for a while, so it was a cool opportunity. Um, beautiful family. So, the others post about that. Five O First gets a lot of calls out because a lot of people want to meet stormtroopers. So, um, I see on Facebook a lot of times, uh, like people wanting to just have Star Wars come out to terminally ill patients, and that's a big thing that um, we get to do all over. And why are, why hospital are, visits too. Why are stormtroopers popular? Uh, because you get to be fun when you're a stormtrooper. They're not that scary, but they're, oh, they're cool fun armor. to be. They are, but yeah. they're also fun for people to have at their event because okay. Darth Vader and Kylo Ren can be kind of scary because they're these big looming characters with a lot of dramatic fabric and lights. But stormtroopers don't 
have the same threat level. Okay. I mean, if they're marching So behind, they kind of balance things out? Yeah, so they're okay. a fun one. They have armor. So everybody likes armor. Armor's cool. Uh, they're, I mean, honestly, probably one of the most fun ones to get to interact with or to be because even though the costume's uncomfortable, you get to um, just do a lot of fun things. And there's not really a character you need to portray. Mm -hmm. um, so generic things are sometimes fun. But yeah, everybody loves stormtroopers. Right. Kids aren't yeah, afraid of them. Uh, they usually we... hug them. <laughs> um, and you see all huh. these all these four year old girls at their last thing were just running over stormtroopers and hugging their legs or holding their hands. No fear at all. <laughs> that sounds weird. It it kind of is, but they they love it. So it's <clears throat> fun. Uh, I guess with your character, mm -hmm. who is right, uh, you have to um, be more in character. Than, I like, try to be if it's stuff. if it's kids. Um, you know, usually they know that we're a group of people, just normal people in costume, right, but then okay. I had a couple of girls who knew I was Ray, so I tried to answer my questions in character and keep the illusion alive for them. Okay. But I don't do an accent. Um, they, it's never bothered them. Okay. And I don't claim to be the character because we're not officially representing the characters. But Okay. <clears throat> so uh, you're not allowed to talk about political stuff when you're... Correct. You're we have up. Are you are you allowed to talk about how you're not allowed to talk about political <laughs> stuff? Uh, yeah, it's one of the things we can't talk about okay. in costume. Because um, we have to be careful because we are... Disney and Lucasfilm has a lot of us to operate, and uh, we're a public face of Lucasfilm, um, essentially. So we can't be in any pictures with alcohol in them. We can't hold any branded objects. Like if we're at a sporting event, we can't hold anything with like the magic logo. We can be at the stadium, we can take a picture with the mascot if the mascot wants a picture, but we can't appear to be endorsing anything. So we have to, and we've had a lot of people who want us to take, see us and they want us to take a picture in front of their business and we can't do that either because we can't appear to be endorsing stuff. So, which is fair because Disney and Lucasfilm own the property and they want to make sure that these characters are not endorsing anything that Disney and Lucasfilm would not be okay endorsing. So they're gracious enough to allow us to do what we do. So we operate under whatever rules they would like us to. Makes some sense. It does. Especially in Orlando, because we have Disney, so it's uh, right here, and it's always good to be careful and respectful. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's change the subject. Let's talk about Cambodia. Cool. Always happy to talk about Cambodia. Fantastic. Um, so, mission trip. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been doing mission trips to Cambodia? This year, if I go again, will be year number four. So we go once a year. Um, yeah, wow, it's been a while. So it'll be my fifth trip to Asia, fourth trip to Cambodia specifically. Okay, so it's in Asia. It uh, is. It wh is. What is it next to? Vietnam and Thailand. Okay. So Vietnam is to the east, and then Thailand's to the west. So okay. it's a small country. Okay. Um, uh, tell me about what you do when you go there. Hmm. So what we do is our team goes and we support an existing group called Agape International Mission, and they have been working there for over a decade now, I believe, um, to fight sex trafficking primarily. All human trafficking, but child sex trafficking is a huge problem in Cambodia, and it was this neighborhood was probably the worst neighborhood um, that it was around for that. And the whole neighborhood was centered around child sex trafficking. Yeah, so the horrible. church that we were, that they work out of used to be a brothel. Uh, the rehab home, the restoration homes used to be brothels. Um, so all of these buildings that are now these beautiful places of uh, light and healing used to be horrible places, but now people are, if they're in trouble, they come to Swipok to get help instead of fleeing from it, which is a awesome. beautiful transition. So we help take care of some of the um, kind of data, one of the day-to-day -day things that they do there is they run a kids club. And kids club is a time where all the local kids in the neighborhood um, come and care about Jesus, kind of like a vacation Bible school or how we would do kids ministry at Mosaic. Um, and then they go to a couple of the young disciples who are um, in their teens to 20s and they're all local 
people who serve beautifully, they go and they drive and they pick up kids from the brick factories that these kids have to work at sometimes. And they've gotten permission from the brick factory owners to let the kids come and be kids for a few hours. So they get to come in the morning or in the afternoon, depending on the session, and they hear about Jesus. They get to play. They get to dance. Um, they get to connect with leaders who care about them. And it's a, I mean, knowing about Jesus is the most important thing. And then also on a physical safety level, it lets them form a relationship with the kids and their families. And if any of them go missing, they can follow up with their family and say, hey, we haven't seen them. Are they sick or did something worse happen? And sometimes it's because a child has been kidnapped or sold and it gives them an opportunity to um, jump in and help with a situation. Okay. So it's, it, they're an incredible church. It's a beautiful opportunity to get to come alongside them and help them. And it's, um, really great that it's a long-term thing. Short-term mission trips are okay, but if there's not something long-term, yeah. you know, you bring relief for a while and then you step out and everything goes back to the way it was, but they, they, these people have been living and serving in this community, uh, full time. And it's, it's really incredible. Um, they have, they also have a, an outreach to the young men in the community. They have a boxing gym and, uh, so young men who would potentially become pimps um, hear about Jesus eventually that you don't have to be a Christian to come to any of these things. It's just something that usually happens over time as you have people who love Jesus mentoring you and loving you. Um, and there's stories of traffickers who are making thousands of dollars um, a month, which is a really, sub as, uh, I can't talk, substantial amount um, in Cambodia to making only $80 a month doing something legal, um, which is, and 80 does not go far in Cambodia, that barely covers rent. Um, so to willingly leave behind thousands of dollars because you now understand how wrong trafficking is, mm. is really cool to see. Oh yeah. So it's very, very holistic. They have so that must be a, a hard decision for them to make. I ain't uh, where, sure. But uh, to to get out of that life is probably worth it. Yeah, it's hard because trafficking is the norm there. It's not something um, that people think of as taboo. It's very much a part of. <clears throat> it has not always been a part of the culture. It's um, always good to learn the history behind why a country has the brokenness that it does. And in Cambodia's case, there was a genocide in the 70s that killed a quarter of the population. And it was a Cambodian, on Cambodian genocide. It was a group called the Khmer Rouge that uh, wanted to reduce the country down to zero. So everybody, religious, educated, um, political, um, people from the city were killed. Uh, and the... Oh, and anybody with disabilities, that was another thing. Glasses um, would get you killed, too. So, that, but from that, in the span of a couple of years, everybody older than you, everybody more wise than you was killed, and then you're left in this horrible, hmm. broken country. Nobody knew, and if you were a child soldier, that's how you were right. You grew up losing your parents. You had to be a soldier. You had to kill as a child, and then you become a parent you don't have an idea of what a healthy home looks like. You don't have the idea of what a relationship with your children should be because as a child, you were treated this way. So it's uh, not something that people do just because they think it's a good thing. It, it's just a what you've been brought up in and um, I think mean, they're still feeling the effects of the brokenness as much as the 70s doesn't sound like it was so recent, but... It, it really changed the country and the culture. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. seeing the healing in Spy Pock shows what it could be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I think you've answered all of my questions that I was going to ask. So. Oh. oh, if someone wanted to help, how can they help? Uh, 
Well, like you're going on a mission trip, right? I am. Not and in... you need funding. Yes. I will. I will. We won't have that around until much closer to the time of the trip. We go in the fall because otherwise you run into rainy season and you can't drive on the roads during rainy season because it's it's kind of flooded and everything's uh, or most things are on dirt roads, so it wouldn't be a very effective time to send teams if you know you can't actually drive to the areas that need help. Um, but if people want to. Um, help Agape International Mission. They use funding at any time to help cover medical costs in the community. They have wellness clinics. Um, they have kids club, and they're building a school. So it'll be a school available to the community, and it will be in the poorest area. And it's going to be one of the best schools. Um, so funding for that, or any funding toward them, helps fund that and helps provide school for these children in the community who don't have education available to them. Okay. So, it's the Gothic International Mission. They're a wonderful organization. They um, are very careful with finances. They steward everything very well. Fantastic. I will probably post this on Facebook, and then you can post like the link to yeah. Agape, and then I'll copy-paste it to my Perfect. description in YouTube. Fantastic. Yes. Um... <clears throat> Well, thanks again for letting me interview Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll try again. Maybe we can get together sometime. I can interview you when you're wearing your, your Ray costume. I'll let you know if we do any public events that you come out to. Fantastic. I see the whole group. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.